your van's getting full of water when it's raining and you want to figure out how to fix it, you've landed in the right place. Real quick, we'll show you what's happening in our van. You see all the mold on the seat back there. It was coming in through the grates when it would rain heavy on that uh, well panel right there and would also soak the boot. And we leave the seat back folded down quite a bit into the boot and we didn't even know it was wet and uh, until the vehicle started to have that, you know, that sour, pungent uh, smell of, you know, all of the insulation getting wet and soaked. Uh, it was leaking everywhere. It stained the headliner. Uh, it was actually soaking the seatbelt reels, so when you would pull the seatbelt out, the seatbelt would actually be wet, and it would have a sour smell, and it would get all over you. Kind of gross. So we figured out it was coming in underneath the ditch moldings, and we'll show you what we have to do to fix it. To remove the roof rail, you just need to take a small screwdriver or a Torx driver, and you find the little release hole right here. You stick it in the hole. Depress the little, the little clamp inside there and just take the palm of your hand and push this forward. Using a T27 bit, quarter inch drive, and a short extension, start removing the fasteners that hold the roof rail on. Using a small blade screwdriver, I'm going to remove the little cover to expose the fasteners on the top rail here. Because those fasteners are kind of buried down in this hole, I'm going to use a 532nd-ish Allen key to get down in there. I'm just going to stick it down in the hole like that, and then I'll just take a small wrench, and that's going to be my leverage. I'm just going to come in and crack these loose like that. Just like that. It's a pretty long fastener. I can get my fingers on it. Just popping the last cover off. Panning out, I'm going to just remove the rack. That's all there is to it. With the rail off, this little black cover just lifts off and it exposes two more fasteners like the ones we removed. Center rail support. All right, with the rail removed, now you can just easily lift these ditch moldings out because they're not really held in with anything. The only thing that holds them down is the luggage rack. These just come right out. And then you have access to where the sealer is that you're gonna have to repair. This other one comes off a little tougher. It has one, it has one clip just behind the windshield. And all you wanna do is just grab this and just pull it back. They usually come right off. kind of a mess here don't we see this nasty so it wasn't draining very well and then it looks like to me it also has cracks in the seam sealer where the roof meets this big C pillar and water's actually getting into the roof and actually soaking the seatbelt reels inside the car and it's also leaking in the rear and filling the rear well up with water when we have heavy rain so I'll show you what we do a little later we're gonna get this cleaned up we're gonna tape it off a little bit and we're gonna use one of my favorite sealers, 3M5200 Marine Sealer. And once that sealer is on there, it probably will outlast the vehicle. Taking a good close look after I got all the 
fungus and dirt scrubbed off of these uh, this uh, ditch seam you can see where there's cracks all over it and that's where the water was finding its way in and really making a mess of things now, it's a 15 year old vehicle so uh, you know these are the kind of things you have to deal with as they age and you got to really stay on top of it uh, once they start getting full of water they turn into junk really quick so uh, this one hasn't been leaking very long so we're gonna get in there and we're gonna get these seams filled up you can see I got a lot of work cut off from me here uh, this is in the uh, the jam on the hatch area. You can see where the sealer's all gone away there, where the sheet metal wraps around into the jam there. That's all gone away too. Those are all those are all places where water can find its way into the vehicle and start rotting it out. I think this section is where the water was finding its way into the trunk well. The 3M5200 comes in several different colors. Uh, I have a tube of black and white shown here. We're going to use black today because I don't think that's going to stand out as bad in the areas that will be exposed after the moldings are replaced. Um, there's a few few places in the hatch jams that are going to have to be gone over to. And uh, since I don't plan on doing any paint work, I'm just going to use black. And 3M5200 cannot be painted over, so uh, that's a good reason to use black if you're doing some touch-up on the car. And after you're done with it, it kind of looks like it came that way. Here's the tricky part. I'm going to lay a bead in this jam here underneath the gate. It's a little tight. Just take your time, squeeze the trigger, and just work your way down. Fill it up. Oops. Away from me. I'm going to try to overlap that sheet metal just a little bit and then we'll just let it flow in. The idea is not to have to touch it very much with my finger because I don't have any gloves. There seems to be a glove shortage right now. So I just came in and laid a nice ribbon. You can see where. In here I didn't do such a good job so I'm just gonna add a little more it's really hard to see what you're doing because there's this rubber boot on this side for the power for the brake light on the tailgate I guess and the lights so I just came in and I'm still not happy with it so I'm probably gonna pinky it just a little bit get in with my finger just get in and just work that into that joint because that's the whole idea you want to cover this joint where the other sealer gave up the ghost I got one little spot on the corner here I want to bring it around just a little and don't worry about it if it looks a little goopy this uh, 5200 kind of self levels you can let it sit and again this is just in a you know in a jam so uh, and I mean that literally not figuratively um, I pretty well got it to lay it into that joint and that's that's what I was after I got a little spot up here. I still may want to come in and trial it a little bit with my finger. I'm going to lay a bead in this edge as far as I can without getting it on the spoiler. I'm just going to bring it right around here. Bring it down here. Bring it around this seam. I'm just going to break it off right there. And it actually looks pretty good. I'm going to come in and finger trial it just a little bit. just to work it into that joint a little. Trying not to make a huge mess out of this. Sometimes easier said than done. Okay, I got that filled in pretty good the way I want it. I'll just get that little, little dollop smoothed out. And that should self-level. I think I got, that, I got that filled in pretty good. I'm gonna have to work my way to the roof and get the rest of that joint before I can work my way down towards the windshield. 
The only thing you do want to do while you're working along, if you don't have gloves like me, is you can just take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and it will take the 5200 right off. It cleans it off, it'll get it right off. Water doesn't really take it off and 5200 actually cures faster in water, kind of like super glue does. So just to keep from getting a huge buildup on my, on my hands, I just come in here and wipe it off. It also keeps me from like transferring this all over the paint on the vehicle. Uh, anywhere where this stuff cures, it's really, really hard to get off. I'm gonna come in and just catch the top of this joint right here and wrap it around the top. And I'm just gonna break it off right here. And then I'm gonna come right here as close as I can get. And I wanna fill in this little dollop here where I know this overlap on this edge where I know it doesn't have sealer on it anymore. And I'm just gonna smear as much on there as I can. And what I'll do, I'll come in here. I'm just gonna trowel it with my fingers a little bit to get it into that joint. I hate to get it up towards the paint like that, but um, you gotta you got work it into this joint. Sometimes you just can't get it in with the, with the gun very good. And there's a big spot here where I kind of missed, but I'm gonna come in and smear that around like that. And that's pretty good, but I've got a joint right here where it's not connected. I think that pretty well got it. I can just dip my finger where I didn't want to, but that's okay. I'm gonna have to come in and clean that up real quick with alcohol so it doesn't cure on the paint. And then we'll uh, we'll run a bead along the, the, the top uh, there where the uh, roof meets the C-pillar all the way down. T200 off. You just don't wanna soak anything with alcohol that you want to cure. So you wanna keep it off the joint. You just wanna wipe it off where you don't want it. See that? Just tidy it up a little bit. You know, see, I got some spots over here where I got a little sloppy with my hand. Just got, you know, in the jam. You just wanna come in and just wipe that stuff off before it cures. Once it cures, it's not coming off. I got a spot here I accidentally touched when I was doing something else. Come in and smooth it over. And I'm just gonna walk away from that. We'll call that good enough. And that's something you'll never pay any attention to. And you're always gonna be five or six feet away from it when you open the gate. And after it gets a little bit of road grime on it, it'll, uh, It'll look like it left the factory that way. And the upside is, is every time it rains, it doesn't get full of water anymore. Here, and I'm gonna lay a bead down and run it all the way down the length of the vehicle. Being very careful to fill up the trough just where I know it's cracked. And then I'm gonna to have to come in and trowel this down a little bit. I get everything skinned over, that I've covered over that I want to. Um, basically just covering that a uh, big crack where most of the sealer let go on this seam and the water was just getting in this trough when we have these heavy rains and it goes it goes right in there and it was soaking our headliner and it was actually soaking the uh, seatbelt uh, reels and also soaking the uh, the trunk well in the rear you only do it like a real heavy rain if it was heavy enough to fill this uh, ditch up underneath this ditch molding um, it would just pull it right in. Okay. I'm just looking all the way down, you can see the nice bead I laid. I probably could walk away from that. It probably would just flow in and seal on its own. But just to make sure I only have to do this once, I'm gonna go with my finger and trowel it down a little bit and work it into the joint, full length of the vehicle. And then, uh, it takes about seven days to cure, but it can get wet within 24 hours. It's not gonna hurt it. Uh, water actually speeds the cure process. And unlike silicone, this stuff isn't gonna peel up and fall off in a year or two. Just coming in and troweling with my finger. Just gonna come here, work my way all the way down and just work it into the joint. And I put a generous bead on there. So working this down like this, I should only have to go over it one time. Work it into there where that part is. OK, 
Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna just thin this out right here because I know there's a molding clip that has to go here. Not all of these are used, but I know the one on the one with the roof rack, you use one on the front and one on the rear. So you don't want to have a whole lot of this built up or it's gonna make that clip not seat in properly, and then the, the trim's gonna pop up right there when you snap it back on. With the roof all sealed up, it's time to address some problems we have with the ditch moldings. Uh, the Florida Sun has really done a number on these, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off all of the dead rubber um, where it would normally meet up against the vehicle, and then I'm going to go in and scrub these up really good. I'm going to use a, um, a heavy-duty scouring sponge, some ivory liquid. Uh, simple green would probably work just as well, if not better. Um, and then we're going to go in and get all of the mold off, get the dead rubber off the top surface. And then you can see along here there's some places that are really loose. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel that up as much as I can without stretching it or tearing it. And I'm going to take that same 3M5200 and put that underneath anywhere where the rubber's lifted and glue it back down and let it sit for about four days. I'm also going to use some fine grit paper, probably 600 to 1500 grit, and try to smooth this rubber out as much as I can. It does have some pits in it where it looks like maybe some mold or something ate into it. And what I'm doing is I'm giving it a coat of Duplicolor uh, vinyl fabric spray. Basically it's uh, vinyl paint for painting like vinyl seats and door panels. Um, this stuff's been around. This is, happens to be, I think, Duplicolor brand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to give it several coats and I'm going to sand it in between coats and basically level out all the pitting and all the bad spots. Here's one I've already sanded down. And um, vinyl spray paint sp sticks amazingly well to rubber. So as you can see looking at this, it almost looks like it's a piece of metal where you're just filling in the pits. And those are just the little spots where there are some, some divots in the rubber where the weather had really gotten the best of it. And it's probably going to take uh, three or four shots, uh, give it a couple coats, let it dry, and it dries really quickly. It, it looks like it's a lacquer-based product like it was back in the day when you used to get upholstery spray paint. So um, it's, it's, I think, just about thoroughly dried within a half an hour, if not an hour, if you're in low hum humidity, like in this climate control garage. And here I am. This is probably uh, probably the third, uh, third and final shot here where I've hit it with... Uh, 600 and then finished it off with a little 1500. Uh, you want to be careful not to have any uh, heavy duty uh, sand scratches in it because that lacquer will make it swell up. And uh, I'm going to give it, uh, I think, one more coat and then we'll probably go color sand it and polish it and we'll get it looking pretty close to factory. Alright, you're
And here we go. And we're going to do one more coat of paint. And we're getting pretty close here. I'm, I'm not going to make it perfect because it's going to be on the roof. But uh, if I wanted to, I could make this look concourse. But it's just a matter of how much time and effort you're willing to put into it. Time for a little color sanding with some fine grit sandpaper. And I'm pretty much at a point here where I'm going to consider this finished product. Uh, the rubber's just a little bit wavy, and you can see still just a little bit of pitting, but it smoothed out pretty good. I emptied out the remainder of the can on all of the gaskets for the roof rails just so they have a nice black look when they're reinstalled on the vehicle. Okay, you saw what it took from start to finish. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.